Hey guys, welcome to another episode of the Rusty Beauties Restorations. Today we're going to be working on the 9464, 1994, 64, <laughs> 1964 TR4. We are rebuilding the engine. We are still here with David from the previous episode. We just finished filming it, but we were at a good point where we could stop it. So now we're going to continue working, but it's going to be another episode. So what we've done in the previous episode is we installed the liners inside the block, we installed the crankshaft, we installed the camshaft first and then the crankshaft. We dealt with the rear seal, we dealt with the thrust washers and then we dealt with the rear main cap here with the felt and with the front seal we installed the gasket, the ceiling block and that's where we ended the video. So today we're going to continue with the piston rings we're gonna check them first into the cylinders to see if the gaps are okay just came new but we have to check them and uh, then we're gonna install them the, on the pistons we have to install the pistons on the connecting rods and then we're gonna have to drop everything inside the engine so that's exciting so without further ado let's get crackalacking So here are the rings that came. We got the liners, the pistons and the rings together as a kit. They come marked in the bags. Here it says first, second and third ring. They have different profiles and they also have, they are marked. That's what we checked first with David. They are marked here. Here it says top on the second one. Also, it says top here, and what I like is on the oil ring, normally on the TR4, you have one green and one red end here where the join is, because when you install it in the groove, sometimes you can overlap the two ends without knowing, and that's a problem. So uh, they were giving you one green and one red end, so you can make sure that you see them both. If you only see green or if you only see red, this means that you overlap them. But these rings, they give you a little wire inside, so now you can't overlap them anymore. You just stretch it like that, put it in the groove, let go, and it closes, and you can't overlap them, so that makes the installation easier. So, before we install them on the pistons though we're gonna have to check them in the cylinders because they need to have certain gap here which David just checked and it is between 10 and 15 thou uh, when they are installed in the cylinders so the reason for that is because when they get warm they expand and if you don't have any gap the the ring is gonna get compressed into itself and it might snap so that's why you need to have some gap but if that gap is too big of course you're gonna have blow by so we need to check them and make sure that they all are within that tolerance 10 to 15 thou so david already flipped the engine up the right side up so now we can start putting the rings one by one in we're gonna measure them and once we match it a ring with cylinder that's where it stays we're gonna make sure that that's where it goes later okay so we're gonna put the oil rings to the side for now we're gonna use the second and the first only so first is gonna go on top second is gonna go on the bottom and i'm gonna spread them around like that so these are all my first rings and these are all my second rings and we're gonna number them Give numbers one two three and four this is gonna be first this is gonna be second and we're gonna take the first string of the first cylinder and we're gonna match it to the cylinder now we're gonna look at the mark here it says top here so that's how it goes oops so it's gonna go like that we're gonna take one of the pistons and we're gonna push the ring down the cylinder a little bit to make sure that it is parallel to the top surface 
And now we can measure this little gap here. Do you see it? So this is 10 tau. It is more than 10. Let's try 13. Yeah, 13 is tight. So it is, I guess, 12. Yeah, 12 is perfect. So I'm gonna write that down because if we need to switch them later, sometimes it happens that they are different and one matches better in one cylinder than the other. So sometimes you need to switch them. So for now, we're gonna mark them to know how much is each and every one. So that's the second ring of the first cylinder. We're gonna do that one the same way. Okay, so this one looks smaller. Yeah, uh, it fits. Yeah, 12 tau. This one is 12 tau as well. They're pretty good usually when you buy a kit, but sometimes it happens that your gap is a little bit too small. In that case, what you can do is you can put a file vertically on the vise and then go with your ring put it on both sides of the file and just go up and down, drag it a few times and then test it again. That's how you can adjust the gap. So is that first on the mm -hmm. second? Yep. And we're just gonna go and do them all. And I'm gonna show you at the end what everything is, what, sh what it shows. Okay, so what happens is this ring in the last cylinder measures 18 tau in the fourth cylinder. So I brought it here as the first ring of the first cylinder and it measures 15. And the original one that was here in measure 12, I believe, right? Yep, 12. It used to measure 12. I put it in fourth cylinder and now it measures 15 there. So it looks like this cylinder is a little bit bigger than this one, so that's how we're gonna keep them. So that's your first, fourth. and that's your fourth. And we still have one more second ring to test. So that's what they look like. 12, 13, 14, 14. This one measured 18 here, so we switched them with that one. So now it's 15, and this one used to be 12, but now it is 15. So everything is within the tolerance this way. And that's how we're gonna leave it. All right, so before we install the rings though, let's install the pistons on the connecting rods. And now our connecting rods have numbers too, and they are marked here. So that's number four, if you see here, it's dark in this corner of the garage. Also somebody, marked four dots here so that's number four that's number <laughs> this one also has four dots but it's number three that has one dot and it says number one here and that's number two here and it has two dots okay some of the pistons have an arrow here telling you what direction they should be. These ones don't have anything, so I'm, I'm gonna assume that they don't have a direction, but I'm still gonna make sure that they are all pointing to the same side, the wording here. So let's say I'm gonna put the letters to the open side of the connecting rod, like this. So we have to remove this snap ring. What is it called, snap ring? <laughs> Almost. I thought that was gonna happen. Push the wrist pin out. Clean inside here. Now the push rods also have a like oil passage from the pin to the wrist pin. 
and it also has a little hole here at the side so we have to blow inside I don't know why we have these holes here to the side but they go through so that's clean we're gonna put these back together and we're gonna put the bearings later when we're gonna when we're putting it in the engine actually so standard the wording there you go the heater comes on And you know, since we're here, let's put also the rings on. So we're gonna take one rail from the oil ring and we're gonna fish it all the way to the bottom, not inside the channel, out of the channel, but like this, past, past the groove for the oil ring. Then we're gonna take the actual ring. We're gonna put it inside. Wow, that used to be such a pain in the butt, installing the oil ring for TR4. With these rings, it's like fantastic. So now we can drop, uh, we can drop the rail inside on one side of the ring, grab another rail and put it on the other side of the oil ring. <laughs> they made it so easy. I'm gonna turn the rail a little bit to stagger them, even though it's nothing but whatever. So the oil ring is in place. Then we're gonna take number two here. I'm gonna make sure that it is with the top up. So here it says top. So we're gonna be careful not to get it stuck in the first groove. So I'm not gonna go all the way to the groove. I'm gonna go just above the first one for now. Tight. And then with the f this end, I'm gonna go all the way to the second groove. And we're gonna start dragging it there. Okay. Okay, and now we are in the second groove. Now we're going to take number one, where it says top, right here. This is the top side, of course. We're going to shove it all the way in the groove, and then we're going to go around. Okay, and you know what? Might as well put the bearings on since we are assembling it here. So I'm going to clean that side perfectly. So these are... 20 under like we said so I'm gonna wipe it again again the same way as the main bearings these have a little tab here that needs to match this tab and of course this hole needs to match this hole otherwise we're not gonna have any lubrication then this goes into the cup the same way the tab needs to match the tab here this hole doesn't match anything but I just give you a hole on both bearings so you don't need to worry about mismatching them. There you go. And this assembly is ready to go. And now we're gonna do the same with the other three and we're gonna be ready to drop them inside the engine. All right, so they're all assembled, rings installed, bearings installed so now what we have to do is lubricate them stagger the rings and drop them in the engine but i'm gonna do that tomorrow because i'm tired today david pushed me to the limit today i thought for sure we're gonna have the pistons installed get the engine <laughs> back in the car go for a drive but somebody <laughs> needs to stop for dinner or something yeah tomorrow <laughs> okay so we have the four assemblies prepared let's install them 
into the block. So before we start, of course, we're going to wipe the cylinders. Now some people say that you can't use rug or even a paper towel because, you know, you're going to scratch the cylinder. Well, I'm not that crazy. A nice cotton rug, nice and soft, is not going to damage anything. Just going to get rid of uh, like whatever. So we make sure that the cylinders are clean. Then we're going to lubricate them one by one, of course. We're going to lubricate number one first. And here, on the cylinders and on the rings, I used to use assembly lube as well. But somebody told me that that's not very good because once we start the engine, the assembly lube burns and uh, turns into like a gunky stuff that is making a mess inside the cylinder. And I agree, probably it's, it's not a great idea. I'm not sure. So that's why I started using regular engine oil here for the cylinders. So let's spray some there. So, so make sure that there's oil all over the place on the cylinder. I'm even using the back of my hand. Okay. Then we're gonna take our piston number one. Make sure again that we're not mistaken. So number one here piston number one. Now they go like this with the open side of the connecting rod. So the open side of the connecting rod goes towards this side of the engine. I call it the busy side where the fuel pump and the distributor are, the oil filter, etc, etc. So that's how they go. So that's important when you have direction. Some pistons have arrows or it just says front. So uh, if you have that, you have to be very careful when you're assembling it to make sure that the front corresponds with the direction of the connecting rod. So now here we're good. So now we're gonna lubricate the rings as well. I'm gonna have to make sure that this oil ring is not off. We're going to have to make sure here that the two rails are inside the groove. So we're going to stagger them a little bit. So we're going to put the gap on one ring on one side, the other gap on the other side. And the last thing that we have to do is we're going to put assembly loop on the bearing here because we're going to drop it now and assemble it to the crankshaft, of course. And now we can drop it carefully. Some people cover the sharp edges here with stuff. I don't think it's that, like if, as long as you're careful here, nothing bad is gonna happen. And now we're gonna put this across the wrist pin so it can hold it for a while here. Hold, hold me for a while. This won't last forever. Then we're gonna take our ring compressor and we have to loosen it a lot because last time I used it for TR6. So the pistons there are much smaller, even though TR6 has bigger volume, but has more pistons, that's why they are smaller. Okay, so we're going over the whole piston. And now we're gonna tighten here everything. So as long as we see that there's no gap between the piston and the compressor, this means that all the rings are in their grooves because like I said, sometimes the oil ring can come out, but as long as there are no gaps here, this means that they are in their grooves Take this out now. So now here we have to make sure that the ring compressor is square to itself and the piston. So we're gonna tap it very gently like that. Okay, so now it's square. And now in the back of the mallet or the rubber mallet, we can just push the piston down. 
if we feel any resistance, we stop, we don't force it. Because that would mean that one of the rings is stuck at the edge of the cylinder. There you go. So it is in. Oh, so now we're gonna push it a little bit lower, but not all the way. So the connecting rod is out of the liner. What I forgot to tell you is that I made sure that the crankshaft is at bottom dead center for this cylinder. So we are not touching the crankshaft yet. So now we're gonna turn it around. We're gonna put assembly loop here. Now we can push more the piston up. And we can turn a little bit the crank like this. So it lines up perfectly. There you go. I'm gonna put this shell. However, here if you remember, they, these bolts came with lock washers, but there shouldn't be lock washers there. There must be a tap washer, which we bought, so we're going to put tap washers there. So here we can't turn it around, but in some engines it's possible, so that's why you have to make sure that the cut section of the cup matches the cut section of the connecting rod, because here you see the profiles are different. In this case we have this uh, dowel or sleeve only on one side, not on the other, so you can't mess it up. So that's how it goes. And now I'm gonna go find the tap washer and we're gonna install the bolts. There you go. We're gonna snag them for now. And when we're done with all four, we're gonna torque them. And eventually, the crank is still going to spin. <laughs> yes. Okay, I'm going to go find the wood roof keys for here. So I can install my two to spin this with a ratchet because it's going to become heavy at some point. So this is the base for my uh, degree wheel, which I also use as a tool to turn the crankshaft. So it spins good. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna put this one at bottom dead center and we're gonna turn the engine upside down again or right side up. We're gonna have to remove this again because it's gonna be in the way for our ring compressor. Just gonna put it here for now. Don't forget to move it. And now we know the drill. Here I wanted to show you something, I'm almost done, but if you look at this now, there's a big gap there that wouldn't close. So this means that probably one of the rails of the oil ring, of the oil ring is not in place. So I'm not gonna force it, I'm gonna take out the spring compressor and I'm gonna adjust the rails and we're gonna do that again. So just wanted to show you that you have to look for things like that. Now it is pretty tight here, and if I don't pay attention and I just start tapping the piston down, I might break something or bend something. So you have to be really careful for things like that. So let's take it out together and see what's going on there. Now it's very possible that by the time I take it out, it's gonna fix itself, which I think it did. Yeah, you see? <laughs> It was just a little click, but it was a problem. So it clicked and it went in, but it was jammed 
on itself and it wasn't fitting inside the groove. So we don't want to force it. We want to double check it and see what's going on and fix it before we damage anything. There you go. Oh my God, we did something wrong. We have three pistons at top dead center. Yeah, I'm just kidding you. So everything is assembled and we need to make sure that still everything turns. We can make full revolutions here. <laughs> so it needs to have some resistance, but not too much, obviously. If there's too much resistance, this means that something is wrong with the bearings. But it spins with just the right amount of force. Okay, so now before we torque them though, in before we bend the tab washers, let's double check that everything is assembled correctly because we might have made a mistake. So make sure that the numbers here match. So one, one, four, four, two, two, and three, three. Okay. And then also on top, now in this case, doesn't matter, I think, because nobody gave us directions for the pistons, but again, it's a good idea to make sure that all the pistons are pointing the right way if they have arrows. In our case, they don't have arrows, but they have numbers that we number them, so one and four, and the STD, STD wording is on that side. And these are two and three and the wording is on that side. So it's always good to double check ourselves. So now in this case, we can flip it upside down again and we can torque the connecting rod bolts and bend the tab washers and we're done with this part of the assembly. I'm gonna go check what the torque spec is. I believe it was 65, but I'm not sure. David is not here anymore to do that research for me, so I have to go and find it myself. <laughs> okay, I was close, it's 60, 55 to 60 foot pounds. So we're gonna do 60. This one bent, this one bent, but it's fine. Okay. okay. How did this one bend? Okay, let's double check again <laughs> if everything spins. <laughs> yeah, even after we torque them, they spin nicely. Great, so now you know what? Since we have it still open at the bottom, let's install the oil pump. For the oil pump, we got a new rotor and vane from most motors, so you don't need to buy an entire pump. In most cases, you can go with just buying the internals. So they call it oil pump repair kit, which is here, rotor and vane oil pump. So the part number is 836005, I believe, because it's, it's eaten a little bit, but I believe that's the part number. There you go, we have the inner rotor and outer rotor. So we're gonna put a few drops of oil here because I cleaned it inside and outside Enough. So here we have a dot, which I assume is the top. Yep. So you see we have dots here on top. Wow, I can't spin it now. But we have dots here on top to tell us what's top, what's bottom. So Chef Tash corrected me yesterday that I have the tolerances wrong. So according to the manual, we have 10 tau tolerance here, which we can't shove 10 tau at all. 
and 10 tau here. Let me try with 7. No, it is 4 tau. Good, and here. And this is probably 4 or 5 tau. So we are perfect here. And the other one that we need to know is here on top with a straight edge like that. We need to have not more than 4 tau here. No. So we are perfect. So yeah, let's install it then. Now every time I assemble a TR6 engine, I always say that on TR4 there's a gasket here. Because on TR6, for whatever reason, there's no gasket. And I believe on Spitfire as well. I'm not really sure about Spitfire. But I think it's a good idea to have a gasket here. Because otherwise, we might have internal bleeding and lose part of our pressure before the oil even reaches the filter, you know? So I'm gonna put it backwards now. Just so I can put gasket maker. And then we're gonna flip it. Obviously, it's important that this opening here matches. <laughs> Comes without saying, right? Even though I said it. <laughs> okay. And with the bottom end, I believe we are done. We're not gonna close it permanently yet. We're just gonna put the cover with two screws for now. But I believe we are done. Just in case we need to open it again. I don't know why, but whatever. But I believe at the bottom we are done. All right, so I flipped it the right side up and I put this piece of cardboard here to keep the cylinders and the whole engine from debris and stuff. And I installed the gasket here and the front engine plate. For whatever reason, the gasket <laughs> doesn't match in some of the holes, like most of the holes match, but some of them don't, which is weird because I never had this issue before, but it's okay because when I put the bolt there and I start tightening it, it just makes room for itself. For example, let me show you here. Let's put one bolt here. So here, almost half of the hole is covered. But when I put the bolt, it starts no problem. And then I go, absolutely no problem. So these I have to remove. Here I think there's a pedestal that holds the cover but we're gonna put it later because it's gonna be in our way now for the chain and everything. These, now we can torque, they're gonna stay. So these two, you see, I haven't tightened them yet and I will tighten them now because these are the two that go into the ceiling block. So they're very important not to over torque them. I believe the torque here is 16 foot pounds, which is in one of my videos, I demonstrated how 16 foot pounds is actually pretty much what you can do with one finger. That much. You want to test it? Yeah, let's test it. And I believe it's not even 16, I think it's 14. Let me double check. So in fact, they give you 12 to 14 foot-pounds for all these bolts. So it says for engine plate and front cover, 12 to 14 foot-pounds. Okay, so that's 14. Let's see. There you go. So I was just there. This one needed a little bit more. Okay, so these are torqued, 
the rest we're gonna do later. So next, I guess, let's install the timing mechanism here. Oh, okay. actually, let me install this keeper now. And it goes this way with the cut part to the right. And you can't mess it up because it's, as you can see here, they are offset. They're not in the center, the, the two holes. So you can't, you can't put it 180 degrees for sure. There you go. Okay, you see? If you turn it 180, the holes won't match. So you can't mess it up. So that's how it goes. And now that I'm here, I also found the bolts for the camshaft. So we're gonna put these for now here. Okay. So now the camshaft can't come out anymore, but it's spinning nicely. Okay, so now we're gonna remove this keeper again from here. I hope, like I tapped it in, but it should come out easy. There you go. And now we're gonna put our camshaft gear and our crankshaft gear, the other way around, our camshaft gear and our crankshaft gear and we're gonna make sure that they are on the same plane, the plane from Toronto to Bulgaria. <laughs> so we have a new crank gear, crankshaft gear, part number 837040. So how it goes, you see here, beveled part, not bevel part, the beveled part goes towards the engine because here on the crankshaft, as you can see here, this is a round edge, it's not square. So that's how it goes. For now we don't need the wood roof keys. Come on. Okay. We're gonna put it without shims, but we have some here sitting handy. Six uh, tau and four tau. And then we have a new, new camshaft gear, uh, part number 838000. We're gonna put that. Now, unlike the TR6, the camshaft gear here is reversible, which gives you a lot of possibilities for adjustment. On TR6, the, the adjustment of the timing is a little bit limited because you can only put it like this or 90 degrees. Here, you can also reverse it, and that's another setting, and that's another setting, but we're gonna talk about that in the next video. So for now, we're gonna put it in any direction, doesn't really matter which one. So we're gonna snug the gear. This one, we're gonna make sure that it is all the way in. And now we're gonna take a straight edge. We're gonna put it on the teeth of both gears and we're gonna see what we see. So if we put it like this on the, now here, we have to make sure that we are not on the heads of the screws. So now we can check here to see if it touches everywhere. Yeah, you see it, it rocks a little bit. If it touches here and here, but not here, like it does, this means this gear needs to come out a little bit. So we need to put a shim in the back, but this is a little bit pointless for me, to be honest, because we have an end play of three to five tau on this crankshaft, right? So we don't know in which position. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna measure it in both positions. So I'm gonna make sure now that it is all the way back, let's say. Okay, I don't know. I, I didn't feel it moving, but let's, let's check the gears in this position. Yeah, I can feel it rocking. I, you can see it moving here. It's pivoting here and it's rocking back and forth. Actually a lot. Um, so let me try and move it in the other direction, the crankshaft. Okay, I don't know if you saw it moving, but I think it moved a little bit forward. And now it is, it's still rocking, but very little. 
Okay, so I'm gonna put a four Tao Shim here. We have four and six. So we're gonna put one four Tao Shim. <coughs> Which is this one. Yeah. It has a little bit bigger diameter because of that rounded edge. Again, the beveled edge towards the engine. Okay, now it's springing a little bit because of the shim in the back. But yeah. Okay, now it looks like we're a little bit further out here in the center. But don't forget that now the crankshaft is all the way forward. Let me pull it backwards again. <laughs> and now it's touching everywhere. Okay, so that's how we're gonna leave it. Okay, in this case now, we can pull out the pulley again, one last time, and install the wood roof key in the rear channel. We have the, sh we have the shim there, we didn't take out the shim because the shim wouldn't go if we, ca if we have the key there. That's why we kept it without key so far. But now we can put it. We can put the other one as well, but we're gonna put it later, I believe we can. Yeah, we can put the other one later. Again, one more time, careful about the direction. And let's put it on. There you go. And now let's put the other one as well, just in case, because we're gonna need it for our two to turn the crank and to and to put our degree wheel. Yeah, because the timing video is coming soon. <laughs> there you go. And just so we don't lose it, I'm gonna put this. So you can see how I made this too, right? <laughs> An old gear. I have to really go on the lathe and get rid of the teeth, but eh, it's not a big deal. Okay, so all we need now is the chain here and then we can do the timing but we're gonna leave that for the next video because I want it to be a separate video so um, I've done I don't know how many probably 10 different videos on timing on my channel on different engines mostly TR6 but also Spitfire and TR4 and every time I try to simplify it and make it as easy as possible to understand and every time when I go and edit it I realize that I could have made it a little bit simpler than that. So this time I'm going to try to make it really, really easy to understand. I'm going to take my time editing it, but I'm going to try to make it simple. Anyways, that's for the next video. For now, I want to thank you one more time for watching, for commenting, for subscribing, for sharing, for supporting the channel financially. That's really appreciated. I want to remind you also about the Facebook group called Rusty Beauties. If you don't know about it, there's 2030 members I believe now over 2000 anyways and everybody is uh, sharing their experience with their project everybody is uh, helping each other people are asking questions and other people are responding I'm trying to be uh, active as much as I could there uh, I'm also trying to help other people there but many times I by the time I see the question there are three four responses already and they are really good responses. If I have different opinion, then I express it as well. So it is a really good forum, I should call it, where people not only help each other, but also share their sometimes even jokes. I post funny pictures when I find some on internet. I just post them in the forum for other people to have a little bit of a laugh. Uh, but everything is related to Rusty Beauties too. Also, if you're a business owner and you do something that's related to our Rusty Beauties, don't hesitate to advertise your business there. That's helpful for us, and that's what the group is for, so we can help each other, right? And um, also, if you sell parts or cars or you want to buy a car, don't hesitate to post on the Facebook group. And if you find my content helpful, 
and you wish to donate a little bit, there is a way you can uh, find link in the description to my Patreon page. You can donate $5 monthly or 10 or, or 20 if you like to. You can also send one-time donations via PayPal to my email address elindotyakov at trustybeauties.com. But as I like to say, the financial support is, no, is not a requirement in order to have access to all my content. There's no early access, there's no members only content, there's no such thing. Everybody has access to everything and the financial support is only in case you want to say uh, thank you Elaine, instead of paying 100 bucks to the mechanic to do that, I was able to do it myself thanks to you, so here's five dollars to buy beer for example or something like that. Only if you wish, otherwise everything is free for everybody because I don't want to take away from the people who can't afford donating and still want to have access to the information that I share on my channel. So again, I started rambling, so that's enough for today. Again, one more time, thank you for everything, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.